Colossians chapter 1, and um, we're going to begin reading in verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of His will, in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Paul Paul's making a prayer. He's talking about the Colossians and his great thrill to know of their faith. And he wants two things for them specifically that I want us to notice today. In verse 9, he desires that they, that they know his will. But notice the way he has it, that they might be filled with the knowledge of His will. Who knew that God had a will? Who knew that God had a plan? Well, if you talk to Christianity, it wouldn't seem like He had much of a plan or much of a will. And Paul wanted the saints, Paul wanted the saints at Colossae to understand God's will. He, they wanted, he wanted them to be filled with that will. And then, there in verse 10, he wanted them to increase in the knowledge of God. Now the way the concordant writes that, that for that word knowledge, the realization of God. And I want to tell you, the greatest treasure that I've come to realize that I have in the past number of years is that I've come to know God. I've come to have a realization yes, of who God is. Amen. You know, when you look at Christianity and you look at you look at the way they present God, you know, it starts off back here in creation and God created Adam, put him on the planet. God created Eve, and put her on the planet. And you'd think, well, God must have had a plan. But if he did have a plan based on Christianity, he didn't go too good. Because <laughs> immediately they fell. And they cast the whole human race into sin. And ever since the Garden of Eden, God's been trying to play catch up yeah. with His creation. He's been trying to get one step ahead of His creatures. Yeah. And for all the story of time, God's been trying to get these people back who He lost. You read the story of the flood. The whole world got so bad he lost the whole creation again except for eight people. He just can't keep up with these folks. They're just too bad. Satan's too appealing. Satan's got the upper hand. And he keeps trying and he keeps trying. He tried with the nation of Israel. What an utter failure they were. What a disgrace to him, the dishonor to him they were. Hey, government's not working too good. I think I'll try the church. I think I'll try Christianity, God says. And that's been working into a fine thing, hasn't it? <laughs> 2,000 years of disaster. <laughs> God just can't seem to get anything going. Right. He had a great plan. Anybody who wants to, who has exercised their free will, can get to go to heaven. <laughs> And he leaves it up to a, a bunch of missionaries and evangelists to go all over the world to spread the story of Christianity to give people a chance to get out of hell. And the end result of the story, depending on what version of Christianity you listen to, is some 90% or so of all God's creation will be eternally lost to him. <coughs> Wow. Yeah. What was he thinking? Right. Way back here. What kind of plan did he have? You know what? I'm going to create a lot of stuff. I'm going to create a lot of people. I mean, right now on the planet, billions of people. I'm going to create billions of people. And I'm going to see if I can get 5 or 10% of them. <laughs> and the rest of them, i got a great plan. I'm going to burn them and burn them and burn them and torture them and make them cry and scream and be in agony and torment and fire and brimstone. 
Increasing in the realization of God. Amen. The greatest truth I know is not the salvation of all. The greatest truth I know is God Himself. Amen. I get to know Him. I get to know who He is. The, 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 the story of the God of Christianity is that out here, when it's all said and done, there's going to be a little group of happy people. <laughs> and we'll be so happy. We're going to be floating on clouds and playing harps. These are things I always wanted to do. <laughs> I always want to float on clouds and play harps. <laughs> and it's just going to be wonderful. We're going to do that forever and ever. <laughs> you know? There's going to be that harp music. It's just going to be grand, isn't it? I always love to go and hear harp music. I get harp music concerts all the time. <laughs> I'm just into it. <laughs> and we're just going to have a wonderful time. A wonderful time. All five or ten percent of us that God ever made. Meanwhile, our mothers and our fathers and our sisters and our brothers and our cousins and our children and our co-workers and all these people that we knew, God's solution is not a place called Calvary. Where the Son of God became victorious. <laughs> That's not the solution. God's solution is isolation of sin. God's going to take sin and isolate it in some corner of the universe. He's going to create a penitentiary and he's going to isolate the criminals. He's going to isolate, he's not going to fix anything. He's not going to rehabilitate anything. He's not going to solve anything. He is going to forever and ever and ever and ever isolate sin and sinners from the rest of His small creation that will be happy forever. Well, I wish I'd have thought of a great plan like that. That's a humdinger, ain't it? This is the God of Christianity. Yeah. You're right. You're right. <clears throat> and they're ashamed to tell you the whole story. Yeah. You're right. They're ashamed of it. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. They're ashamed of it. We were just talking a few minutes ago. And what they want to say is their story is they, they get you into their big uh, operations of deception. And now what they want to tell you is, you don't want to be separated from God for all eternity. Separated. That's a nice way to say it. Burn you forever and ever. We're just going to call it separated. <laughs> and we're going to say God loves you. In fact, He loves you so much, He won't violate your free will right. to torture you forever and ever. 
Wow. What kind of love is that? Right. <coughs> what kind of God is that? Paul wanted the saints to get a realization of God with a big G. I'm going make it a big O and a big G. <laughs> He's big. You were just trying to cover up that you couldn't spell it. <laughs> big. <laughs> <laughs> we find out that God is large and in charge. Yes, sir. Oh, you know, I'm going to have to let you in on a secret. Always secretly in my heart. When I was a student of the Scriptures from just a teenager, and then I began to teach the Scriptures, I always secretly wanted a God who was really God. Then I'd read certain verses in the Scripture where it seemed like it was saying he was in charge and he was the boss and he did whatever he wanted and he had a plan. And oh, there was something inside of me wanting to be excited. But there was something that immediately would quench all that. You're right. I'd read, I'd read something about his will. That God had a will. Yeah. And he did whatever he wanted. And no one would stay his hand. He would do all his pleasure. Say, why? I want a God like that. But then I'd see the outcome and I'm thinking, oh no. But he doesn't get what he wants. Right? His hands are tied. He wants to say that he can't. God wants to do something he can't do. Oh, I wish I didn't have a God. I wish I had a God could do, want to do stuff and then be able to do whatever he wanted to do. Instead, I was stuck with a God who wanted to do stuff he couldn't do. Oh, I just wish I could do that. I wish I'd save these people. Just can't. I try real hard, but I can't do it. That's this. That's that God. You're right. It's not the God of the Scriptures. One day, thank God the blinders begin to come off. Amen. And you begin to see that not only is God God. He had a great plan. He has always been 100% successful in everything he's ever done. Amen. And no matter what it might look like to you at the moment, and this has always been the story of God in all the stories of the Bible, no matter what it might look like at the moment, and it may look like he don't know what he's doing, it may look like it's a failure, the fact is everything is right on target, right according to the plan, Amen. not one little dot of a movement to the left or right. Amen. Oh my, what a great place to come to. First John, our... our and you can just write this down. John, excuse me. John 1.18, Jesus Christ, it says concerning him, No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, He declared Him. Jesus Christ is the declarer of the true and living God. The way that the concordance says, I love this word here, for that word declare, it says, He unfolds. Unfolds Him. Like a wonderful present that's really wrapped up and it just keep unfolding. And that's the story of my life. I don't know about you, but the layers just keep peeling off. And you get to see bigger and bigger. We, we, were down, we were down in Florida earlier this year and a lady came up to me and she says, you know what? God's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Yes, sir. You know, he wasn't getting bigger. She just kept seeing him bigger. You know, she just kept another layer come off. Another layer come off. Another one come off and she kept seeing him larger and larger and larger. That is the prayer of Paul. Yes, sir. That you increase. Yeah. And if God is not getting bigger to your view, you are not on a spiritual journey. Right. You're probably on a religious journey. In fact, that journey will make God get smaller and smaller and smaller. Got that right. Instead of bigger and bigger and bigger. Even... even even David said the whole point of the scriptures is, is to slowly peel back this God so we can see him. How big he is. David talked about magnifying the Lord. Now you know there's two ways you can magnify something. 
you can magnify something that's really, 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 really microscopic with a microscope. And you can magnify it and look, make it look big. That's what, that's what Christianity does with this God. He's a puny little dog. And they put that their little t- microscope on there and they try to make him look big and impressive. Over here, he's going to torture people wherever and they, 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 try, to ma- they try to magnify him and say, he's good, he's good. <laughs> he's loving. He's loving. I don't even, if that's love, I don't even want none of it. Give me some hate or something. <laughs> no. Don't give me that kind of love. Are you kidding me? But you know, and then there's another kind of magnification. And it's when there's this huge object, way off in space somewhere, huge, and we take a telescope. It's so far away that we can't realize how big it is, and with a telescope instead of a microscope looking at something microscopic, we take a telescope and we take something big and large way out there and we bring it up so we can get an eye on it, so we can get an understanding of it. And Jesus Christ is the one who lets us see the Father. Yeah. And it's His revelation of Him that we look to. When you see Jesus Christ, you see the Father. Some plot. Some have us having the idea somehow that God and the Lord Jesus Christ are, are at cross purposes and that, they, that, that they're not in harmony. And somehow Jesus Christ is holding back the Father's wrath from you and I. I used to view God as an angry God. Yeah. He's mean and mad. And His Son's there holding back. The only reason God doesn't hate me and kill me is Jesus Christ standing in between. That's right. I was told that. Mm-hmm. Yep. I was told that. You know? really hates you. Right. He hates sin. He hates sinners. He's angry with the wicked and wicked. <laughs> Every day. And Jesus Christ is hiding you. You're hidden. You're hidden. He's hiding you. God can't see you. Just see Jesus. He likes Jesus. <laughs> it's a trick. Okay? You know, some here he thinks he's seeing now, and you really see Jesus. And, oh, I like you. Yeah, it's a trick. Jesus is somehow, somehow a good guy, and he's tricking. He's pulling this trick on the Father, so the Father won't beat you up. <laughs> oh man, don't you just love this story here? <laughs> Forget all this. Amen. Forget religion. Yeah. Forget Amen. religion. Let's go with this God. Let's go. get let's get a picture of the real, true, and living God yes. who knows what He's doing, who has a plan, who has the power to execute the plan, who is loving and kind and gracious, and will see it through all the way to the end. And in the end, He is going to be all yeah. everything. Everything. He's going to be all. In all. That's what the scriptures say. That's what we're preaching right there. That's what we want to know about. That's right. Now, Jesus Christ tells us a few things here. Not only does he reveal in his earthly ministry to Israel through his person and through his teaching, he reveals the Father. Not again. I'm not getting anything. But then along came Saul of Tarsus. You kidding me? All right. And then along came Saul of Tarsus. Jesus Christ revealed the Father through him. You want to know? You want to get the greatest story of this God? He is progressively, just like Paul says, he wants every believer to increase in the knowledge of God. Find out more and more about God. You know, you go to Christianity, you'll find more and more about your sin. You'll find more and more about things you should do and not do. You'll find more and more about all kinds of stuff. But if you're not growing, if you don't know more about God, and I'm talking about on a personal level, I get to, you know how we get to know each other? Say, well, I know about him. Yeah. I know about Alan. I know he lives 
you know, North Carolina, and I know, I know he teaches on, on, on the internet and stuff, but it's another thing to get to know Alan and get to know him more and more. You know what he likes, you know what he likes to eat, you know what he likes to do, you, you know his interests, his, you know his family, you begin to know him. You know more. Do you know more about God than you did a year ago? Tell it. Tell it. If you did, you didn't get it from Christianity. That's right. I found out that my teaching when I was in the system wasn't about learning more and more about God. It was about preaching about all kinds of things instead of Him. Instead of God. Notice some things here real quickly. First of all, Paul's desire for the body of Christ is that we would know that we would increase in the realization of God, which we just read in this verse. But we also see that he wants us to have a realization of the truth. 2 Timothy 2.25, I'll just read these to you for time's sake. That God's desire is that men come to the realization of the truth. In Colossians 1.9 which we had just read, the realization of His will. Colossians 2.20, uh, excuse me, uh, Colossians 2.2, 2, the realization of the secret of God. Philippians, uh, or excuse me, Philemon 1.6. I like that. Tell you what, let's turn here. Philemon. Philemon 1.6. Philemon 6 that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus the realization of every good thing that's where <laughs> in you. I thought there was nothing good in you. Nothing good in me. The way the concordant uh, 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 puts that is um, so that the fellowship of your faith may become operative in the realization of every good thing which is in us for Christ Jesus. You know what Christianity forgets to tell us? Christianity forgets to tell us and stress to us that we are the workmanship of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We're the workmanship of God. For we are His workmanship. We're the handy work of God. In fact, that's the way the uh, Weymouth puts it. That we are God's own handiwork. The concordance says that we are His achievement. You know that God is the one making us? Yeah. And He is making something really special. Amen. Not because it's us, but because He's the one making us. He's the Creator. And we're His handiwork. <coughs> Listen. God's, God's <coughs> desire for you that He's working and Paul's prayer for you is that we would come to a realization. <laughs> I think a realization, I think of the, uh, I don't know if they still have, have this uh, this uh, line of commercials, the VA commercials, you know, where you go, I could have had a V8! <laughs> you know? I could have, wow, you just come to this realization that I just had this something bad in my body and I could have put something good in it. I like that. To me, that that's the idea of realization. You go, Wow. Right. God wants you to. Wow. God. Wow. The realization of the Son of God. Wow. The realization of God's will. Wow. The realization of the secret in God. Wow. The realization of every good thing that's in you. Wow. And Paul's prayer is that you be increasing. Right. Increasing it. Right. This is the focus place. This is the place that gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's my prayer for you. Amen. And if you're under teaching, 
that doesn't make God get bigger and His will get bigger and Jesus Christ get bigger and the secret of God get bigger and all the good things that God is making in you in Christ Jesus get bigger and bigger and bigger, you're in the wrong place. Amen. You're listening to the wrong teaching. Because this is what spiritual growth is all about. Amen. Amen.